Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and today's video lesson is on ratio tables. Please make sure that you have your notes packet and you're taking notes and following along as we go through the video. Pause whenever necessary to stay caught up. Okay, let's get started. Ratio tables can help us find equivalent ratios, make multiplicative comparisons, and solve prediction and comparison real-world problems. So our first situation says that a pet store sells cats and dogs. The ratio of cats to dogs is 6 to 8. If there are 72 dogs, what is the total number of pets in the pet store? Okay, the first important information that we're given is the ratio of cats to dogs. It is 6 to 8 in that order. Cats goes first. Cats is six, the dogs are eight. So we have a ratio table that's already been set up for us. And the first thing you want to do is to write what the given ratio is. So it's a six to eight cats to dog ratio. So we've got the six in the first column for cats and eight for dogs. Now, what they're asking us is they're telling us, well, if there are 72 dogs, what is the total number of pets? So we're going to need a third line here, third row, for total. We've got the cats and the dogs, but they want to know the total number. So we need to fill this in. If they sell only cats and dogs, then to find the total, we just add it up. 6 plus 8 is 14. Then they tell us, well, if we have 72 dogs, then what is the total number of pets? So we need to somehow go from eight dogs to 72 dogs and find how many total pets there are. You can start off because equivalent ratios and it's a multiplicative relationship, you can start off by listing the multiples. This is one way of using your ratio table. So if I use my multiples of eight for the dogs, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72. And you can do the same for the cats and for the total. So cats would be 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. So when there are 72 dogs, there are 54 cats. You can go and list the multiples for the total for the 14, or you can take the shortcut and add the 54 plus the 72. And you get 126. So that would be the answer. There's 126 total animals. So this was one way of doing it. I'm going to put it up here. One way is to list multiples. Like your skip counting, right? Okay, let me erase this. I'm going to start again, and I'm going to show you another way. Another way, because this is a multiplicative comparison, is you can think about what can I multiply 8 by to make 72? Well, hopefully you recognize that you can multiply by 9, and that would equal 72. Remember our scale factors that we've been working with all semester? That's what this is. We're multiplying 8 times 9 to give us 72. So do the same scale factor for the cats. 6 times 9 is 54. You could also use the same scale factor for the 14, multiply it by 9, and you get the 126, or you could add the 54 plus 72 to get the 126. Either way. So another way of using the table is to use it with a scale factor. Sometimes the scale factor is easy to see, sometimes it's a little bit harder. If it's easy, go straight forward. If it's a little bit harder, list your multiples. So there are a lot of different ways you could do this. You could also
I'm gonna come over here and erase again. Sometimes you can simplify. Like, I could divide by two, right? And get a four, so if I divide this by two, well, I'll do it this way. I'll get a four, and then I can see the scale factor. This one's a little bit more difficult, but the scale factor would be 18. Then I would have to divide the six by two and get a three, and multiply that by 18. That's another way of doing it. I think for this particular problem, that one's a little bit harder. The ratio tables, what they do is they help us see the multiplicative comparison. Okay, let's try another one. Martha purchased rose bushes for her garden. She bought 10 white rose bushes, four red, and six yellow rose bushes. Which statement is true? So we need to go through these four statements and see which one is true. We'll notice the ratio table has been set up for us. We've got our white, red, and yellow with the respective number of rose bushes that she bought. Look at the first one. The number of white rose bushes is two times the number of yellow. So students get this really confused because they look at this and they want to do white times two. So they want to do 10 times two. So they do the white, which is 10, and they do it times two, and it should equal the yellow, which it doesn't. But that's not the way to look at it. Do you remember in elementary school you would find clue words, and we still use clue words to determine the operation. Are you adding, are you subtracting, are you multiplying, etc. right? Well, there are clue words that also mean equal, like the equal sign. And one of the biggest ones is the word is. Is means equal. So if you have a problem like this where it says, okay, is this true? The number of white rose bushes is two times the number of yellow. That is means equal. Well, how many white rose bushes are there? There's 10. Is that equal to two times the number of yellow? Well, if I multiply six times two, I get 12. Is that equal to the 10 white rose bushes? No, it's not. So this statement is false. Try another one. The number of red rose bushes is, circle that is, that means equals, is two and five tenths times the number of yellow. So two and a half point five times the number of yellow. So come back over here to my yellow, and this time instead of doing times two, I'm going to multiply it by two point five. Okay, this I can go over here, do on the side. Remember, take out the decimal point, do twenty five times six, and we get a hundred and fifty. We have one decimal place. So we get 15. So are there 15 rose bushes? 15 red rose bushes? No, there's only 40. I'm sorry, there's only four. So this is also false. The number of yellow bushes is, which means equal, one and a half, and this should be times the number of red. One and a half times the number of red. All right, let's look at our red, four. We need to multiply this by one and a half. So I'm going to do 15 times 4, one decimal place, I get 6. Is 6 equal to the number of yellow ro rose bushes? Yep, it sure is. So this one is true. Okay, let's try the last one, see if it's true. The number of white rose bushes, so white, is 6 tenths times the number of yellow. How many white bushes are there? There's 10. So if we do 6 tenths times the yellow, will it equal 10? Well, let's see. The yellow is 6. This time, let's multiply it by 6 tenths. Well, I know 6 times 6 is 36, and I need one decimal place, so I get 3.6. Is that equal to 10? No, it's not. So rows, ratio tables can help you determine if 
different multiplicative comparisons are true. Right? Ratio tables can also help you make predictions. What do I mean by predictions? Well, let's see. Joey Chestnut won a hot dog eating contest by eating 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. If he ate at a constant rate, how many hot dogs did he eat every two minutes? Okay, we've well, taken a look at this. This is your rate right here. 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. Okay, that's your rate. So the ratio table show your rate. You have your hot dogs, you have your time in minutes. We have 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. But this time, we want to know, well, how much does he eat in every two minutes? So this is a prediction. You know it's a constant rate. The rate's not going to change. So you just want to make it smaller and figure out how much that is for two minutes. We need to find out how many hot dogs that would be in two minutes. So we can make this smaller by dividing. We could divide by what? Two. We divide by two. We get 33 and 12 divided by two is six. What would you have to divide six by to make a two? Three. Remember, when you're getting smaller, it's division. When you're getting larger, it's going to be multiplication. 33 divided by 3 is 11, and of course, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So now we've used our ratio table, and we can see that in 2 minutes, he can eat 11 hot dogs. So he can eat 11 hot dogs in 2 minutes. I'm going to abbreviate minutes here. So we, will, we were being able to make what they call like a prediction or find out the amount that would happen using our ratio table. So what exactly are we doing here? Multiplying or dividing related quantities by the same number is called scaling. We always scale by multiplying or dividing, never by adding or subtracting. Okay, a couple more examples. Skim milk consists, contains about 80 calories for every eight ounces. How many calories do 10 ounces of skim milk contain? So what are we comparing here? What is our rate? Our rate is talking about calories and ounces of milk. So that's gonna be our labels, milk and calories. And our, the rate that we're given is eight ounces, eight, 80 calories for eight ounces. So we're going to fill in our table here. They have the 8 ounces for the 80 calories. That's our given rate. And what are we wanting to change? We're wanting to change the ounces to 10. So we want to change the milk to 10, and we want to know how many calories. Do you see a scale factor that will take you from 8 to 10? No, there's not one, is there? Sometimes you have to scale back and then scale forward. So we're going to go back. What could we divide the 8 by? And remember, you have to be able to divide 80 by the same number. You could divide it by 4, right? So we're going to start with that. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 80 divided by 4 is 20. Now can we scale from 2 to 10? Is there a scale factor we can multiply 2 by to make 10? Sure. That would be 5. So we can do 2 times 5 to make 10. Use the same scale factor with the 20. 20 times 2 is 40. So that is our answer. 10 ounces will contain 40 calories. Let's try another one. Joe mows, lawn, Joe mows lawns during his summer vacation to earn money. He took 14 hours last week to mow eight lawns. This is your rate, 14 hours to mow eight lawns. And it tells you this, at this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? So we have our table set up. We have our labels, the hours and the lawns. We know 14 hours, he mows eight lawns. We wanna know how many lawns will he mow in 49 hours. 
Okay, I definitely don't know of a scale factor, any number you can multiply 14 by to make 49. So let's go smaller. 49 is kind of a strange number. So we need to think of factors that 14 and 49 have in common. Can you think of one? Seven, right? So we need to change this 14 into a seven and from there we can go from seven to 49. And to do that we would divide by two. 14 divided by two is seven. You have to use the same scale factor down here on the number of lawns. Eight divided by two is four. Now we can go from seven to nine by multiplying times seven. Seven times seven is 49. Do the same thing to the four. Four times seven is 28. So our answer would be uh, 28 lawns in 49 hours. So hint. Ah, which we already did this. Find a common factor between your starting and your ending anchor points. Use the common factor as your in-between number. Meaning we, the common factor of seven, we needed the common factor of seven in order to make the 49. So that was, that's called the in-between number. So in scaling, the number we multiply by is called scale factor. And the scale factors here would be for the first problem, the scale factors would be divide by four and then multiply by five. For the second problem, the scale factor would be to divide by two and then multiply by seven. Okay, great job, Bobcat.